This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show looking more at the recently leaked Pentagon documents, which have revealed secrets about the war in Ukraine, as well as U.S. spying on its adversaries and allies, including Israel and South Korea. The BBC reports one document shows dozens of special forces from Western nations, including the U.S., are operating inside Ukraine. The document, which was marked top secret, says, the U.K. has 50 special forces, Latvia 17, France 15, U.S. 14, and the Netherlands has one. The Pentagon and Justice Department are investigating the source of the leak. On Tuesday, I interviewed James Bamford, a longtime investigative journalist, author, focused on the intelligence community. In 1982, he published The Puzzle Palace, the first book exposing the inner workings of the NSA, the National Security Agency, like many times larger than the CIA. His latest book, just out, is called Spy Fail, Foreign Spies, Moles, Saboteurs, and the Collapse of America's Counterintelligence. I asked Jim Bamford to talk more about what the documents reveal about the Ukraine war, among other issues. Well, I think it uh, paints a clearer picture uh, of what actually is happening over there. There has been uh, the problem on cable news, uh, both uh, Fox, CNN, MSNBC. You get a lot of people that are pro-war, and they're uh, the Congress members of Congress, senators, and so forth, and uh, they're all giving these upbeat uh, um, uh, accounts of, of how well it's going for Ukraine. Um, the documents give a far more realistic view, uh, saying that. Uh, uh, basically, it's going to come down to a, uh, a stalemate. Uh, there, there is no, not going to be any big winners necessarily, and the uh, 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 Ukrainians are in a very bad position because they're not getting enough ammunition. The Russians uh, have far more, um, have much more uh, access to ammunition than the um, Ukrainians do. So there's a a switch between the the way America perceives the war, I think, uh, uh, to these documents, which uh, give a more realistic, because it's done with uh, intelligence, more realistic uh, view of how the war is going. Um, th there's some interesting findings. Um, uh, in these documents that have been released. One, The Guardian points out, one slide suggested a small contingent of less than 100 special operations personnel from NATO members France, America, Britain and Latvia were already active in Ukraine. Talk about the significance of that. Well, that's what the Russians have been charging for a long time, that the U.S. is more heavily involved, or not just the U.S., but NATO and our uh, uh, NATO partner countries have been involved uh, uh, far more closely and far more directly with the war than uh, is, is led to believe by, uh, by the government, by uh, the Biden administration. So, um, it adds to the uh, weight of those charges that uh, that the U.S. and its allies and the and NATO partners are, are more heavily involved in this war. And that's a very dangerous situation, since you've got nuclear powers involved, uh, Russia, the United States, France, and so forth, uh, all uh, nuclear powers, and uh, we're all fighting over this one piece of territory, and uh, it keeps getting more and more out of hand. So I think that's a very big danger. The New York Times points out military analysts said the documents appear to have been modified in certain parts from their original format, overstating American estimates of Ukrainian war dead and understating estimates of Russian troops killed. The modifications could point to an effort of disinformation by Moscow, the analyst said. Well, I— <laughs> Uh, that's a bit of an overstatement. I think what actually happened, I mean, if you read closely, uh, the documents uh, weren't—the uh, uh, documents were original. They were placed on the Internet uh, in their original form. 
And then what apparently happened was somebody copied some of those documents, and then they altered a bit of the uh, uh, numerical equivalence of who, how many died on which side and so forth. So uh, the documents are real. The documents are not disinformation. Somebody apparently took some of those documents, a couple of them, and uh, crudely uh, changed a few numbers. But uh, it doesn't affect the overall uh, value of the documents that are uh, that were released. Another point the New York Times makes: the Russian military may be flailing, but the private Wagner mercenary group, led by an ally of President Vladimir Putin of Russia, is flourishing in much of the world. Wagner is working to thwart American interests in Africa and has explored branching out to Haiti, right under the nose of the United States. Jim Bamford. Well, that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, it's not just uh, Russia. It's uh, China has been uh, working hard in, in um, Africa to uh, uh, to develop. I mean, as the U.S. has been bombing Middle Eastern countries and spending trillions and trillions of dollars on these useless wars, we get into the uh, Chinese and, and the Russians, to a large degree, have been spending billions of dollars uh, ingratiating themselves with African countries, building bridges, building building roads and so forth. So it's not a big surprise that uh, uh, virtually none of the Russian—none uh, of the African countries have joined in the embargo uh, of Russia or the sanctions. And uh, uh, that's why, uh, you know, the vice president, uh, uh, Harris, flew over to Africa to try to regain, uh, bring back some of that uh, goodwill that we uh, have been squandering while we've been um, launching wars in the Middle East. And then, quoting The Washington Post, the documents also demonstrate what's long been understood but never publicly spelled out. Um, the U.S. intelligence community has penetrated the Russian military and its commanders so deeply that it can warn Ukraine in advance of attacks and reliably assess the strengths and weaknesses of Russian forces. A single page in the leaked trove reveals the U.S. intelligence community knew the Russian Ministry of Defense had transmitted plans to strike Utra Ukrainian troop positions in two locations on a certain date in February, and that Russian military planners were preparing strikes on a dozen energy facilities and an equal number of bridges in Ukraine. James Bamford. Yeah, those are the uh, most significant, I think, of all the revelations, because uh, there's only really two ways that the U.S. could have gotten that intelligence. So one is through signals intelligence, the NSA. And the other is through human intelligence, basically the CIA. So, um, uh, in either of those cases, uh, the, what the Russians are going to do once they learn this is is uh, do an extensive uh, mole hunt and and uh, analysis of the uh, of their communications. So, the mole hunt they'll be looking for any humans that might be assisting the United States by telling them this information about what the dates and the times of these planned uh, operations, and they'll be checking all their uh, uh, communications facilities, changing their codes and so forth, uh, in case we're getting this information by eavesdropping on their communications, by the NSA picking it up. So, in either case, it's, uh, it's bad news for the United States, because we may be losing that uh, whatever source it was that we were getting that information from. And one of the things NBC pointed out was a February 28th document assessing pathways for Israel to provide lethal aid to Ukraine, providing hypothetical situations that might drive Israel from its balancing act between Kyiv and Moscow. Mark secret, the document also suggests what Israeli weapons could be transferred to Ukraine, like Israel's Javelin equivalent and other missile systems. The analysis says the most plausible scenario is that Jerusalem adopts a Turkish model under U.S. pressure. Like Ankara, it would mean that Israel sells lethal defense systems or provides them through third-party entities, while openly advocating for peace and offering to host mediation efforts, James Bamford. Well, once again, uh, it shows how uh, widespread the NSA's eavesdropping capabilities are uh, in terms of picking up what's going on within the uh, Israeli Knesset and the Israeli uh, president's office and so forth, the prime minister's office. So, um, 
uh, it shows a wide variety of how, how much we're eavesdropping. The United States has been pushing uh, Israel to get more heavily involved in the uh, uh, supply of weapons to uh, um, and technology to Ukraine, but um, Israel doesn't want to do it because it doesn't want to anger Russia. Uh, Russia is sort of turning a blind eye to Israel's uh, attacks in, uh, in Syria. And they're, they're afraid that if they um, uh, overtly aid Ukraine um, to a much greater extent, then Russia will uh, be angry at Israel and uh, not allow Israel, basically, to um, send its fighters into Syria anymore. So it's a complicated situation, but uh, the United States is uh, apparently able to eavesdrop on decisions that are made within uh, the Israeli government. And also this latest news out of these documents that Mossad, Israel's spy agency, the equivalent of the U.S. CIA, was pushing Israelis and fomenting a rebellion against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for gutting the Israeli judiciary. Well, it, it shows that we're also eavesdropping on their uh, equivalent of the CIA, basically, the, the Mossad. And uh, in my book, uh, Spy Fail, I write extensively about how we eavesdrop on, uh, on Israel. I mean, there's a huge building uh, 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 in the outskirts of Washington, D.C., um, in Maryland where the uh, Hebrew linguists are all uh, gathered and they eavesdrop on whatever communications goes in and comes out of the Israeli embassy. So the U.S. does a great deal of eavesdropping on Israel, both within Israel and uh, of its diplomatic facilities in the U.S. And just to refresh our audience's memory, we last had you on, Jim, uh, as we talked about Spy Fail, your new book, and your revelations about Benjamin Netanyahu's interference with the 2016 election. The media made a lot of allegations that Russia was involved with subverting the U.S. elections in 2016. But just lay out once again for us what you learned about Netanyahu's efforts to uh, support Trump in the 2016 election and the extent to which he went, something that is known uh, by the U.S. government and Congress but not revealed. Well, uh, everybody remembers Russiagate and the hysteria that uh, the news media, uh, mainstream news media, basically uh, focused on that for two years, uh, looking under every rock for a Russian spy or Russian collaborator, and they never found any. There never were, was any any uh, collusion between the Trump administration uh, and or the Trump campaign and. Um, the Russian government. So uh, the Mueller report came up uh, with a blank when it came uh, to Russian collusion. What people don't know, until I reported in my book, is the fact that uh, the Mueller group, were, the Mueller investigation was not only looking at Russia, they were also looking at other countries that may have been involved in, in uh, eavesdropping and uh, spying within the U.S. and also uh, being involved with campaigns. And what they found was that there was a Russian—I'm sorry, an Israeli agent who had been sent over by Prime Minister Netanyahu um, to uh, collude with the uh, Trump campaign. The idea was that uh, the Israeli agent would pass on intelligence that the uh, Israelis came up with to help the uh, this is intelligence on Hillary Clinton uh, to help the Trump campaign uh, win and the quid pro, uh, uh, quid pro quo for that was that the Trump uh, uh, campaign or President Trump once he was elected uh, would uh, recognize Jerusalem as being the sole uh, uh, basically possession of Israel. Uh, in other words, it wouldn't be divided between Israel and Palestine, which is always would have been the hope to have a peaceful resolution of that. It would be uh, solely uh, 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 Israeli. Uh, so that was the deal. And I discovered this by coming across the actual 
uh, uh, affidavit, uh, FBI affidavit, and a search warrant. The search warrant was for uh, the communications of this Israeli agent, and it laid out in the affidavit, the FBI affidavit, exactly how this plot took place. So it was extraordinary to see that uh, all these two years they were doing this investigation on, on uh, Russia and coming up empty. And they never revealed uh, to the American public the fact that uh, there was this uh, Israeli agent who was uh, deliberately attempting to throw the election um, for the benefit of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. So, going back, uh, James Bamford, to these latest revelations, I'm wondering, I mean, you have been studying for decades, and Spyfell, your new book, shows this, of course. I'm wondering what surprised you most, whether it's the scope of the documents across all of these agencies or where they were released on this gaming platform, the name um, released under, what is it, WowMao, W-O-W-M-A-O? Um, was it uh, the fact that the U.S. government didn't seem on top of it? I think Austin, the defense secretary, was just briefed last week. And what it means, I mean, uh, if they're able to find, and do you think they'll find the person or persons involved with this? Well, basically, all those things surprised me. Uh, you know, it's the first time I've ever seen documents leaked onto a gaming platform. But uh, if I was to guess, I just arbitrarily guess, uh, <coughs> Uh, as I mentioned before, there is basically uh, three or four reasons why people steal secrets and make them and, and release them. Um, one is that they're actual spies and they want to make uh, money and they want to sell them to a foreign government. Another is that they um, uh, uh, have ideological reasons. Uh, they want to help a foreign government, so they leak it. Uh, they're not looking for money. They just leak it for ideological reasons, and uh, a third reason is anger. They didn't get the promotion they wanted, or they uh, aren't treated as well as they think they should be in the office. So to get back at the, uh, at the government or the agency, they uh, leak documents uh, onto some, uh, some platform. And uh, um, basically, those are the reasons. Uh, um, and this, I would think, would probably fall into that third category. It seems like—I mean, again, I'm just speculating here, but somebody uh, who happens to be on this game platform gets angry and uh, uh, at his job or his, her job at the, uh, in the U.S. intelligence community or at the Pentagon and uh, decides to leak a whole bunch of documents to get back at the, uh, at the government. There didn't seem to be any real uh, uh, intelligent uh, selection of documents. In other words, they, they didn't all focus on, on um, uh, Ukraine. Uh, so it wouldn't be somebody that's just, I'm just focused on Ukraine because I want Ukraine to win or I want Russia to win or I want us to get out of this war or whatever. It didn't seem like it was directly focused on that. It seemed like the person just sort of grabbed uh, the closest stack of documents uh, on his desk and uh, uh, folded them up. You can see the folding marks, uh, stuffed mm -hmm. them in his pocket. And uh, again, it could be a man or a woman. I'm just using uh, a male <laughs> as a hypothetical, since most men, uh, most spies end up being men. But uh, the point is that uh, it didn't seem like there was a lot of planning. This uh, they put it. The person put it on a desk, and you could see parts of a magazine. It looked like a fairly uh, um, uh, a magazine designed for certain people who are interested in guns or something or uh, hunting. Uh, so you know that's a clue, and and you can see the image after you take it, and yet you still put it on the uh, internet with that little bit of an image there. You're not being very careful. Um, and uh, so it's, it seems like it was sloppy. It seems like it was haphazard, like it was uh, done quickly. 
And again, to me, it seems like it's somebody who, who did it out of anger. And what about the end of the title of your book and the collapse of America's counterintelligence? Like you're saying right now, this indicates how successful U.S. intelligence is, not maybe not so much on keeping the secrets, but on gathering them. What about the collapse of America's counterintelligence? Well, that's what I've been describing, the, the fact that, you know, that somebody can uh, take all these secrets and, uh, you know, the American public pay a lot of money for the intelligence agencies to collect this intelligence on Russia and China and all over the world. Uh, and it only takes one person to walk out the door with all this information to cancel it all, actually make it even worse, uh, because then they could do countermeasures and put phony information uh, out there for the U.S. to pick up. So, uh, being able to collect all that intelligence is fine. It's very nice. But the problem is they leave the back door open. So, you have all these people, uh, the latest one being this person uh, who, uh, you know, put these documents on a gaming platform, um, folded them up, put it in his pocket, and walked out the door. So, um, you have this failure at the end. You have success at the beginning in, in order to, co to collect the intelligence, but you have the failure at the end to protect the intelligence. James Bamford, longtime investigative journalist, author of Spy Fail, Foreign Spies, Moles, Saboteurs, and the Collapse of America's Counterintelligence. Visit democracynow.org to see part one of our conversation with Bamford, talking about how the leaked documents are based on intelligence gathered by the National Reconnaissance Office, the NRO, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the State Department's Bureau of Intelligence and Research, the Defense Intelligence Agency and the National Security Agency. On Tuesday, National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby urged reporters not to cover the leaked document, saying, quote, it has no business on the front pages of newspapers or on television. It's not intended for public consumption, and it should not be out there, he said. That does it for our show. Happy birthday to Maria Inez Taracena and Anna Osbeck. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.